Yay! Well, we got it working. <laughs> Hello and welcome back, everyone. It is your six covered and the X-ring. Uh, what is up, everyone? Hopefully, everybody's doing well. I'm doing a little better now that we're not watching the circle of death. Yeah, because we actually tried to come on early and it would not connect. I guess it wouldn't allow us to do that because uh, it said you're not supposed to be on time. That would be the first. I well, hope everyone's doing well. We've got a really exciting show for you tonight. If you are a microtech enthusiast, we're going to have some pretty cool things on here. How come everything you do is exciting? It's exciting because life is exciting. Look, he's all down. I'm not down. I'm so, not. so tonight's show is going to be about Blade Show 2021. This was your first ever time attending one and actually working it. Yeah. Uh, what were your thoughts about it? And what can you tell people that have never been there? So someone that's never been to the Blade Show, there is a lot of pre-work that is involved. I mean, a lot. So Microtech being a you know large company, they had a beautiful booth, huge over-the-top kind of deal. So there was a lot of work involved. Biggest one there. Yeah, it was definitely, you could see Microtech. Um, there was a lot of great other companies out there, you know, but you could tell where Microtech was. Yeah, sure. no doubt about it. This was the first year we actually put the Gurkha inside of the building. And um, if you haven't been to Blade Show, it's the largest gathering of knife manufacturers in the world. And it's uh, here lately for the longest time. It's been at the Cobb Galleria down in Atlanta, Georgia. So it's a great venue. Yeah, it's, it's a really nice place. It, it is. Um, and one of the things you might not know about a lot of the manufacturers is they will do what they call Blade Show specials and a Blade Show exclusives. And if you buy an early bird ticket for Friday morning, which you have to pay more for, and, 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 and now, wait. people were actually camping out for this, okay? Yeah, there, I have, actually, I got some video here. And I told Rick, I said, you see all those people around the building? He's like, yes, yeah, they're camping out till tomorrow. This was on, actually, they were starting on Wednesday. And we didn't we know until Friday. Yeah, we got there. We loaded the truck Wednesday, right? Yes. Then we went down there Thursday. Mm -mm. No Wednesday. No, no, we went down on Wednesday. Yeah, we went down Wednesday, and man, it was a it was a long week. It was a lot of fun. Six creators said hundreds of thousands of blades. Yeah, that would be an understatement. Yeah, there was. Um, if you're a knife maker, you know, say you want to dabble in it, and have some fun. They have every material known to man. Everything yeah, from scales, yep. uh, blade steel, Damascus, you name it. So everything from the collector to the builder. Uh, all the machines like Burr Kings and grinders and whatnot will be there. Yeah. And so it's a good place for people to connect. And, and then there's a lot of that going on. And there is a whole lot of that going I on. I think because COVID kind of shut it down last year. So there wasn't a blade show last year. Um, you know, everybody was, you know, buying at the bit to all the dealers to get in and all that kind of stuff, but everybody to basically mingle. and Correct. There was actually 50 less vendors this year than 2018 but there were like 20% more ticket sales. So um, this really was for the consumer. And I'll tell you that like the blade show specials and all that guys, we, we took the Gurkha to sell the blade show specials out of. And so what manufacturers do is as customer appreciation, they will offer a knife and they, you're allowed to buy one at a special price. This case 160 at uh, Microtech, they offered an Ultratech double edge and it was $160, which is about, it's a little, it's a little it's, under half. Actually, it's, it's more. Yeah. Than Cause I don't know what the exact knife price is on the uh, Ultratech, but you're allowed to get one. And for those six that are $160, got one. Oh, six creator got one. Congratulations. Yeah. We got a chance to meet him and quite a few others. It was a, a, a lot, lot of, fun. of viewers. That yeah. It was, came by, said hello. it was, uh, it was pretty neat. Rick, I traded the blue LUDT for a purple one. Oh, nice. There you go. Love watching Forge in the Fire. Yeah, those some of those guys were actually there as well. Let's go up here and see who got first, though. Kind of yeah, while he's doing that, we'll uh, – The Shaggy Rifleman got first place, even though he says second. I would have swore there was a comment before that one, though. Yeah, I thought so as well. All right, John Rollins. We got Andy Nelson, Nancy Mink, Tim Rink. Bunny fart loads out there. Chris Estes. Let's see here. Snake Man 48. Car Canes out there. 80 Baja. Who else we got out there? Let's see. 
Commonwealth Minutemans out there. I think we got Armament Naxes. Oh, that's why. Okay, Armament Naxes out there. Uh, let's see here. For some reason I can't read tonight. It's too darn small. DW, Joaquin Jack Knopp. Ramsey Country. We got Daniel. John I talked Rawls. to Daniel, got as my judge. He's actually coming to uh, – He's headed to South Carolina coming up pretty soon, but he wants to swing by the Microtech building and check out the. Uh, yeah, nice. Let us know what show. day you're going to be there. We can come by and say hello because we work on a different building, but it's just right down the road. Yeah. Ramsey Country, Robert Warren, Six Creeder. Uh, let's see here. Willard's out there. Barry Danick's out there. Bad Billy 429. And Keith Gregory, Davy J. I saw the dude on Instagram from BDU cut his face and hand. I didn't see that. Uh, Luca's out there, LZ USA, hitting steel, California. Dick Hedges, Dick Hedges. I gotta send your knives. Yeah, I gotta send your knives back, man. Um, we got that one all tuned up and ready to go. I just gotta put some Loctite on the damn thing. Make sure it doesn't fall apart. We got Vanessa Kitty. Who else? Who else? So, so many architects for sale on Facebook. Yeah, there was a ton. I actually went on the site today and looked at it. Yeah, guys, so aftermarket sales of these things are crazy. So some of the people who actually team. stayed in line and got one of those for 160 you immediately see them on market boards and everything for 300 ish because there's a lot of people that want to collect them because they're marked especially for that. So, yeah, I actually tried to do cool. that. I actually tried to do that and didn't end up getting a knife. Uh, all right, so so one of the things we're going to do tonight is talk about and show you some of the blades, and you know maybe you are a collector, maybe you aren't a collector, and we'll talk about some of the models. So uh, the first one up is an LUDT. You guys might, oh, everything's getting washed out. There we go. So this is a LUDT turquoise standard. I know it's not focusing, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not working for you. So every once in a while, Microtech will bring, the, bring these crazy colors out. Uh, this is a turquoise. It is an LUDT, and it is standard, meaning it does not have partial serrations. There were only three of these. And I will tell you, on the Blade Show specials, there were over a 1,000 knives brought, and those sold out the very first day. And all you heard for the, the, the first day that they actually had them for sale... <laughs> and the second day... Do you day, have any Blade Show specials left? And the third day... It was like, it was like that crack thing, that uh, mean... <laughs> I you have any blade show specials left? Just so you guys know, um, I did sales. Yeah, did what was sales. that like? I did sales. <laughs> I don't even know if I talked about it on that little chat before we went to dinner. So I don't do sales. We'll just get that. We'll just put that out there. Um, they handed me a sheet. It had three pages of lines of tiny nice, lines. Tiny lines. <laughs> with the price on it and uh it took me an hour and a half to figure out that they're in numeric order yeah really yeah and um this was five five people Cre know. six creator says but you were good at it <coughs> and he was many I, kudos I, it was his first year doing it you know i've been going there since about 2013 never missed a show you know until they didn't have it in 18 or uh last year uh, 19 hey tommy weeks but he did a great job, stand up job. I appreciate it. it you were that busy. I oh, I was so busy. <laughs> it's, that's not here's the, here's the worst part. So I thought I was busy, and then you said, and then I said you said, oh, they're gonna they're let getting ready to open it up to the general public. And <laughs> now I said, what? <laughs> <laughs> Those are all the early birds. So everybody that had the early birds, they basically there's a video out there of them just running, and it's like. Like Black Friday, where yeah. everybody wants to go oh, buy the, crazy. the TV for and everybody just spreads once they get in. That was which freaking horrible. To our next one. Uh, this is a stitch. Hold on, come on. How do you do this? Focus. You must focus. You must focus. Oh, I had it. I had it. Let me show you his oh, trick. Oh, right there. So it is a stitch. There's you, no. There's no. Oh, you had it too. Okay. Let me show you how this might not work. You're in a better angle. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have a better angle for yeah, sure. There it goes. Uh, stitch, stonewash standard, auto. auto 169 10. Trust me, I sold, <laughs> I don't know, a whole bunch All of All right, stuff. so this knife 
was originally brought out a few years ago and then they didn't make it and they are coming back now. These are very highly sought after. Uh, this is a collaboration with Sebastian Berenji with Borka Blades. You can see his and, logo there. Yeah, you can actually see his logo. Of course, it's going to wash out, you know, but you really that is a yourself. stitch. Would you like to do it? No, I ain't going to be your Vanna White. Show us what we've got, Vanna. Oh, yeah. yeah. Ba bam. So it's a very large blade, but when you choke up on it, it's a really, really good working serial tool. number 6933. Yeah, these are awesome. So the Show thing what? is, a lot of people, when I said choke up on it, so this is the choil right here on the bottom area, but you can hold it like that. So it has, you can put a lot of leverage on this, a very, very popular knife, and these are just now starting to come around. Uh, they didn't have a lot of them, and they sold out immediately on the first day. Yeah, six creators, right. That stitch was in the bag in the case. <laughs> yeah, all of these, every one of these knives that I'm showing you guys were straight from Blade Show and are coming out of the box. Brand day. Brand new. hammer new. Brand hammer. So I'm showing you some things that are actually uh, pretty cool. Uh, uh oh, we got a signature series. Oh, this series. is a signature series. What a signature series is. I feel like one of those knife shows. You know, uh, on TV, what it's called. Check this one out. DLC stitch. Oh, you do have one. Oh, oh yeah. Get your I'm hands buying. off of that thing. That's gone. Okay. Here so, you go. So that's uh, <laughs> DLC, which is diamond light carbon. This one's gone, by the way. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. Say goodbye to this one. So it's got Say goodbye to this, my friend. It has the what the hell? Come on. The Borka engraving on the top, and it's DLC hardware as well as a DLC there, blade. There it is. It, he can't do it. He can't do is. it. Get some. Get some. Get it. Your stream quality is 144p. Really? Hey, there ain't nothing I can do. This ain't stream yard. You can't change it. It's as high as it'll go. I got smoking fast internet. Yeah. There it is. That's, well, oh. he had it. Anyways. There's a... The problem is the steel. Show on the back side where it's got the signature. So on the signature series, it's exactly what it means. It's There's a serial number on it, uh, or not a serial number, but an actual signature that's laser engraved in there and marked. Well, what it means, too, what is, is it doesn't have, all, doesn't have all that. Uh, Other side, pocket clip. That's an M390. It, does it even have a serial number? I would need my reading glasses for that. Actually, dun, dun, dun. Old man. On glasses. Somebody says he has it at 1080p. Yeah, it must be Shaggy Ruffman. We'll see it. All right. Before you end up dropping it and cutting your leg. Oh. You already cut your leg once. Is so your six is now Microtech. QVC, that's it. That's it. QVC. <laughs> that's it. What's up, Matt? Cross. Before we keep going I'm not gonna on. keep going through the different boxes. Are we gonna go through all these? No, I'm going to the same just, time. The LUDT, those uh, one's Which orange one partial serrated. That one's badass. I want to buy that one. One's tactical too. partial serrated. Oh, that's the one. That's the one. I'm trying to show them some unique things. No, you should show them. I'm so just saying, do out of the chat. So come lead auto. What was your uh, takeaway from the show that maybe was different than any other show you had, had uh, been to? Um, well, I've worked that show for many, many years. Uh, the biggest thing, especially for uh, newer employees is understanding that if you're part of the crew, nice. If you're part of the crew that actually has to go in and set up, it is a lot of work. I mean, it is, it is like choreographed it is. to the T. Uh, I actually posted something on Instagram where we're having to lift this uh, aluminum truss up and it's, it's like synchronized swimming. Everybody's got to do it at the same time. Otherwise this thing will get out of balance. Oh, it'll kill some and it's extremely heavy. <laughs> Yeah. And so all of that has to be done. Everything has to be prepped and you have a very minimal amount of time to do it. And then you've got to get all of your sales teams in there. You have to have people helping with, you know, T-shirt sales, hat sales, knife sales. And usually with Microtech, um, they're sold out by the second day. And it's not like we didn't bring enough knives. Oh, it was an un. I had one order for 40 grand. No, we don't talk numbers. It doesn't matter. They don't know okay. anything. Okay. That was a huge order. You thought. No, for me. Yeah, yeah. Because usually I use a small receipt book. And then someone will want one or two knives. 
And then this guy said, I want blah, 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 blah. And oh, man, I was like, you should have went over and saw yeah. <laughs> someone else. So, guys, a lot of people think that Microtech just, you know, doesn't produce many knives. The problem is the demand is so high across the whole globe. I mean, it is an international market, mm -hmm. uh, especially in Asia and in Europe that you will have buyers come in that they don't care what it costs. They just want to get it. I heard someone comment. Um, there's a stigma behind it. There really is. It's like someone was talking about the bad MFs that have co-branded with Microtech for a knife pouch. Those bags sold for $450 and we sold out within a few hours of those bags. The same bag that we do the bullet data management folder. This just has the Marfion dagger on it. Uh, with the buckle it's guys nice the setup. tactical belts that we make um which those are going to be available here shortly you guys have seen this i've been talking about it and the reason i've been holding off is because uh, microtech will be offering as well with their patented buckle system they were selling these belts for 250 dollars okay uh, our price will not be anything like that but then again we will not have the microtech logo so for people that are collectors there's this huge following of people and, uh, for for their products and it's crazy but either way 150 employees um you know four locations in two different states they just can't make them fast enough they just can't no and you know that it's now you've been there for a few months so. no the demand for them's nuts it's insane i had a couple customers and they're from china and different mm -hmm. places and yeah they're just like <laughs> china that's so they can copy it in Japan and all sorts of places. SOCOM Elite Manual Tonto Partial Serrated. 45 Auto says, I don't need a logo. I need a good belt. We're working on it. Tree Feller, what's up, buddy? And Sorry. I have T-shirts coming from Nine Line Apparel. And I did order them, in a lot of them, in big boy sizes. I got 2XL, 3XL. You call me fat? Not you. I just said big boy size. Are you call me fat? I got you for 3L, 3XL. <laughs> So you guys haven't seen a manual. Most of the ones that we carry are autos. Did you say manual, manual? Manual. So you can flick it with the thumb stud um, if you're really good, which I'm not going to do this because Rick's over there, but Just you can it. actually do that and it will open up. So that is the Tonto Edge. Higher, 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 there you higher, go. straighter. And then there you there go. There you go. All right. And it'll be that's it. Down. Partial serrated. Partial serrated. So that's another one. We need big sizes. That's right. I need big boy sizes. And they, they are not going to be cotton. They are going to be the performance fabric. They will have the nylon apparel on uh, the right sleeve. And we are not doing an American flag. That's what we're actually doing. And I want to hear some feedback from you guys because this is just going to be the first run of these. It's a mil spec. Let's see what you guys say. Give me just Tips 43s out there. Welcome to the show, buddy. Omar the TriStar. Hope you guys enjoyed your gifts. Oh, oh, Omar, yeah, here from Trust yeah. what's up? He says he watches all of this. Yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, what's up, uh, man? I wish I should have grabbed it. It's, it's actually upstairs, but uh, Omar visited us at the booth and he actually gave myself, Rick, Tony, Sam, and uh, even Jason. He gave us uh, basically folding arm braces for Glocks, but it's not a Roni. Okay. It's not a, like right. a micro -Roni. arm braces. So I'm sure you guys will see a review or something like that. Come out on, uh, come out on that. But I did want to show you these shirts. Tips 43. I got to remember that one. Give me. Yeah. Tips, thanks for doing on. that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Much appreciated. Really appreciate it. Omar. And his two buddies. I can't remember their names, but they're, they're fun to hang out with. Got to see Chris Beck. Yes, we did. I only got to see him for a second because he, he walked by and I, I guess he saw that we were kind of swamped. We were just getting our butts handed to us. Any new hats come in, Rick? There was uh yeah, there's one model, but I only got <laughs> I claimed one of them and there was two. It's the one with the uh I wore it the other day on that live chat. It's upstairs. Uh, maybe I put it down here. <laughs> While he's doing that, that'll be in the front chest area. It will be two color. It'll have a red reticle in the center. A red reticle. So if, you know, it's not a pocket tee, but that's where if you had a pocket, that's where it would be. And on the back, I just went with the simple X logo like this. So give me just a moment. So it is going to look. 
something like this. Something like this. What do you guys this. think? Because I haven't done shirts like that. Um, you haven't done any shirts. So yeah, I haven't done any shirts. So, yeah, that's uh, you're moving we're, we're going to try to do it. Everybody keeps telling me I need new stuff. You're so. moving up in the YouTube world. Joaquin, I got quite a few hats left, but I don't have any uh, new ones per se. Thank you, Bad Bill. <coughs> you ready? Yeah. This is a big box. Oh, dang. That's a huge. Ha, ha, big claw. <laughs> so, <laughs> he loves it when I do that. Oh, he just stopped carrying that knife, too, so he doesn't even say ha, ha, So, yet. this is, you can't read that, but it's the SBD double What do you got? Signature series. What you got? DLC. You need a shot. Full serrated. <laughs> So, guys, I tried to grab stuff that was a little this more rare or hard to get. Hold on. I think I get this. There it is. Look at that. You're st straight on with the camera. So, it's DLC hardware. It's DLC full serrated. And it does come with Oops. the Kydex case like this. And this is also um, a Sebastian Beringi design. And it is, I don't want to cut Rick here. It is profiled and shaped like this. That's actually it is really nice. Full throw. serrated on one side, on the other one's a plain edge. <laughs> I just call that thing a rifle. I'm not so you call that that's nice a, rifle. That's a really nice rifle. <laughs> yeah. No, that and is you cool. can see uh, Borka's logo there at the bottom. It looks like a cross with a B on it. Man, he actually pulled it off that time. Pulled it's it pretty off. good. Like it actually well, focused. What a big well, I can't stand up to the country. side. I have to get square up. Those now, are sweet shirts, nice blade. Thank you. She uh, like I said, I should have those before too awful long. I'm not sure. No. Big box. This is this is a wakasashi. Now I wish uh, we actually did some wakasashis way back in the day, and they're worth a freaking fortune now. But uh, this is a really really large knife. One of you guys had actually nice requested shit, this knife. Um, most of the stuff I picked up were from requests that people wanted. Holy! But this thing is huge. That's a knife. Very large. Oh, where's yeah, I'm going yeah. to put my hand up to it so you hey, guys tree can see. Hey, Treefeller. That's not a knife. What's now, up, Abigail? This is a knife. That's <laughs> a knife. So this is the uh, Arbiter. Oh, you there. got the serrated one. Oh, yeah. It's serrated on the back edge of the blade. It's sharpened, nice. sharpened, and serrated. What's this? And these are actually very, they've been very difficult to get a hold of. There were only three of them at the show of, I think, three or four. Yeah, of that one. Most of them were the non-serrated. I sold one with two of these. Yeah. But they're also very proud of them as well. That's ridiculous, as Andrew says. Yeah. What movie? <laughs> the Bates Motel. Psycho. Psycho. It's actually nice that it has serrations on this side as well. If you were chopping or something like that, but there was specifically someone here who requested it so they couldn't find one because they've been unobtainium. Unobtainium. What? Serial number 2634. The Blade Show. Oh, yeah. Look how good I am with that. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Well, bam. See this? What we got here is well, a Andrew, armor. a gun guy, you say just what nobody needs, but I know that's about 2,500 of them that they've already made over the years. So yeah. Somebody's buying them. These things are collectible, too. I guess. And you can run around and th those actually work good out here because you can go through briars with them. Use it as a I would rather a have machete. a little longer. A if machete. I want, if I a machete. I got a good machete. So machete. Machete. It's upstairs. I got a lot of stuff upstairs. What up, Mr. Gun Guy? Andrew. Dang, I need to restart my laptop. My chat is messing up again. Yeah, I think you're uh... reboot. Reboot. Yeah, God, this is just a What's small that stack sandwich? of goodies in the background. Matt Cross, I got a. Uh, I just kind of piled it up for a backdrop, but I, my new Razor showed up, HD Gen 2. I paid for that one. Thank you. Um, the Viper that was sent to me is the PST Gen 2. I got it on the uh, Voodoo 360 right now. Doing some, uh, you know, basically using it to see how I like it. I will tell you that I'm having, because uh, all I really shoots the Razor Gen 2 stuff the uh, zero stops different, <laughs> and I had to wrestle with that for a little while. Yes, he did. 
Let's see. Sent you a text. Who did? Great. Armament Naxxas. So, guys, there's two more I want to show you, and these are really special. <clears throat> Rick actually picked this one up. This is the Exoset, which you guys know what the Exoset is. It looks like a little uh, credit card knife. And this was the Blade Show exclusive for the whole show. Um, serial number 12 on this one. And what they do is <clears throat> someone can actually be the manufacturer for a Blade Show exclusive. And so this was the Blade Show 40th year anniversary. And this one is oh, serial number 12. Shibaseki, dude. Why didn't you tell me this shit beforehand? What do you say? It was, he wanted to hell him a freaking altar check. There was Guys, the most beautiful know. one ever. I, I wanted to buy it so bad, but I was working and obviously couldn't. And this is like a gold finish or a goldest finish, but uh, this is one you don't want to handle way too much. It's because close to an FDE kind of gold with gold. Uh, yeah, goldish. And goldish, yeah. But I got that. It's got color. And then I'm, one more, and then we're Cuts. done with this. Guys. One more, and then we're done. And you'll like this. This is actually a signature series, but this one right here is very rare. It's going to be very, very rare. Um, you guys probably don't know what this is. Some of you might, but this is the what, pullback. There you go. Hey. Hera double edge stone wash finish anodized alloy with double vapor bead blast hardware pre production proof run number eight. Made in USA, of course. Yeah, that one's like going to be stupid. <clears throat> These do come with metal um, cards. What they call a certificate of authenticities. And then on the back side, and then this is the knife, guys. It is. I don't want to hold. I don't want to handle this too much. But there's the back side there. Uh, let's see if we can get to focus. Must focus. All right, so there's the signature. That is a round uh, bead for the pocket clip. What is double vapor? And you you guys see the claw. Now, this is what I want to show you guys. Z serial number 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Have that. They were double marked with the Marfion dagger as well as the, the claw. claw. These, oh, here, check out the blade. It actually has a double. Ah, come oh, on. how do you? Oh, it's got a double blood. Yeah, so it's got a double line in there. I can't get it to focus. It's because you're not in the right spot. I gotta be right here. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. I'll try to flip that around. That's actually badass. Yeah, it's actually a really nice knife. Um, I actually saw one today. For eight hundred and ninety-five dollars through one of the dealers, yeah. um, and it wasn't even a serial number one through. Very few people know about the whole one through eleven. Three is not allowed to be marked anymore, guys. There's a story behind that, so they don't do any number threes whatsoever. So it was the first ten, which was one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Now here's the kicker: every single one of those knives you guys just saw are on the X Ring Customs website right now, and they're available to purchase. Those are not for me. I actually picked those up because people had requested knives like that. You guys are hearing it first. I've told no one about it. I literally uploaded them at your house yeah, 20, 30 minutes ago, 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes ago. Yeah, a little longer now because it's 940, but yeah. How many yeah. people attended the knife show? A lot. <laughs> I don't know. The oh, number. I have no idea. It was a tremendous amount. It yeah, was, you see some people multiple times, but. Yeah, yeah a lot cool. of people had, uh, or they were there, they stayed three days, basically, and then there was people that bought a ticket for, like, you know, Friday or Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> Davey J said, I'll be back in a minute. Guys, <laughs> there's only one of everything in there, okay? Uh, there were two items that were sold already that I didn't show you guys that didn't make it because they had already contacted me uh, when we did our little live chat. As far as what I picked up, mm -hmm. the only thing I bought for myself Oh, pretty darn proud of it. What'd you what'd you get? I showered, so it's in my other pair of pants. You took a shower. So if you guys know who Strider Knives is or Mick Strider, um, love him or hate him, either way, he does make a really good knife. But I if you know it. Greg Medford, who basically builds all the knives for Medford Knife and Tools, um, he's out in Arizona, and I, you know he's a super super good guy. I've talked to him many times. 
Uh, but there was a knife that was made that was a collaboration by Strider. I wouldn't even call it a collaboration. It was made by Medford and sold by Strider. And it's called the 0.75 or some people call it the three quarter AR. And so it looks like the SNGs and some of the other ones. So this is typical Strider from what you're going to see here. It looks like a Strider, right? I didn't even get one though. Pretty large. And <clears throat> here's the blade here. I know it's not focusing in on it. Uh, they're usually pretty. Right there. Right, there it is. So you can see the Strider logo. It's with the S35 VN. And then on the other side here, I mean, you can see the Medford workings, basically. I mean, that, that looks, that just speaks Medford. But guys, they only made 10 of these with the Crusader logo. It has titanium scales. Um, only 10 in the world were ever made, and that's all they plan to make. And I was fortunate enough to be able to get this one. Been looking for this for a while. Uh, I do like Striders. Yeah, Arma and Axis. <laughs> Shaggy said, I just checked. Nothing I can afford. Guys, that's the MSRP. Uh, we are an authorized Microtech dealer. I am. Um, I, I've never really tried to promote that end of it anywhere on the YouTube thing other than doing some of the torture tests that we do. Um, but I'm an authorized dealer and everything has to be listed MSRP. You're not yeah. allowed. I mean, you'll lose your, your dealership. You could you, buy, you could basically buy almost any one of those knives and, and they're going to go up in value. Well, I got ones that were desirable or hard to get. And that's yeah. pretty much for you guys. So uh, I'm not worried about them selling. Hopefully nobody picks up my stitch DLC. Yeah, that won't last long. That'll probably be gone so, soon anyway. Um, Mick's wife makes beautiful Damascus knives. Have you seen any? I haven't right? seen this yet. No, I did not know that she actually made knives. Who? Uh, Mick Strider's wife. Oh, yeah, that was pretty cool. But um, yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, you know, other than meeting up with some super, super, super people, um, it was great because a lot of people said, man, they really enjoyed the content. There were a lot of good shooters out there, you know, shooters that said they, they watched it, but they're knife guys. And so, man, it was, it was a good time. It was a hard Four days, five days, but uh, would you go back again? I'm ready. He's ready. I'm not ready yet. Uh, we just learned that we will actually be taking that entire booth for the Me first time Houston. and do, going to Houston for the NRA convention. So we'll be there in full force um, come September. And then uh, we still got to do that with all the shooting and everything. Two weeks, buddy. Two weeks. We will be in Wyoming. Are any of these different knives available on the service personnel program? No. As a matter of fact, Tim, the service personnel program is actually um, on hold. In, yeah, it's in hold. Um, you, I don't know if you guys know Corey Campbell. He was in charge of that, and he left because of commuting problems, and it was just too far. He actually was commuting to and from work every day, two hours each direction. And no pucks and guns are all autos. Uh, no, there was one manual in there, but almost everything was uh, auto with the exception of the Arbiter or the fixed blade. For the LEDT? Oh, oh, the LEDT is only about, I didn't read that part. Hood! Well, you answered the question. I that, tried to answer I the question. I can't read any of this. <laughs> you can't either. <laughs> I answered the question. Uh, yeah, LEDT has only been available in an auto. For Hood. the most part, that's all you're ever going to find in the LEDT. OD, LEDT. Do they make an OD? They do make an OD. Um, P.S. I'm getting old. I can't see crap anymore. Picked up the new Vortex Venom for $500. That's a good score. Oh, now he's increased it. Now we can Now we can see. Oh, Eagle Eyes in here. Was able to run 700 yards full pace. Nice. Wow. Nice. Oh, we need a <laughs> trip line. The new Venom, huh? I haven't looked at the new Venom. Did you guys see KB32 Wipeout? No, I did not. No, I, was, I heard they got I a ton talked, of rain. I talked to Rob on yeah. the way back in, uh, from the uh, play show. match. Yeah. Yeah, he said KB ate it. He said, you got to go see that video, but I just haven't done it yet. I got to watch that. He ate it at mine. Mm -hmm. Ray, think we got Kenny up and running with a sling. Nice. Getting old. How many people attend? Was that an old question or the same one? I think that's been asked twice. Simon, I don't know, buddy. It a lot. That's all. I, that's all I know. I don't know the and the numbers. Got to watch this four by four off road girls who wheel. 
two bad knees and a bad ankle. But our roommate Nax has shot a groundhog and an eyeball 432,000 4, yards with it, with a broken wrist rocket. <laughs> well, in 2015, there were over 11,000 attendees. That was six years ago. And wow. this one broke all records, it and did. it's always went up. So no idea. No idea. Uh, what's up, Rick S? We got a uh, – Bad Billy had said uh, – was it Bad Billy? No, not Bad Billy. Um, it was better than my muzzle pole vault rifle into the mud one, he said. So that's good. Strato says he finally got a SOCOM manual. Nice. Glad to hear it. Y'all got called out on 22 Challenge. Yeah, Brian T. We um, I saw it actually. That new Again? one, the new one, the dot. No, he just wants us to shoot it. All right, we'll do it. Yeah, we actually was going to do it the other day. I forgot to print out the targets. Um, <laughs> you guys have stirred up a storm on Day of the Range. That's well, that's cool. Yeah, Chris that's Simmons cool. won the national championship. Yeah, actually, he uh, did. He, he did, and then he actually won Pig River this weekend as well. I believe. Did he win? Yeah, yeah. I haven't caught up on any of that joke. You can tell where all the popular knives were. Long lines at those booths. Yeah, we saw Ace in the Hole. Ace in the Hole was out there, too. Nice. And yeah. then uh, the other one. Uh, well, uh, man, we saw so many of you guys. It was awesome. It really was. Everybody coming up. And Wheeled and Well-Armed. Wheeled and Well-Armed was there. That saw was him. so hard for me to remember. Yeah, yeah. really cool guy. Uh, Such came by, talked to us. He yeah, carries we, Microtech. No, we talked to him for Don is was super cool. He hung out minutes. for a while. Yeah, I bet the ninety point twenty two dollar challenge remix is just needing a limit four point oh chassis. We'll see. We'll see. Hey, Eagle Eye, when I you say soon, Ray, I'll beat the ninety point. Uh, I actually shot. I got ninety points. Uh, no, the second it's time, time now. The only way you can beat your time is by time. The only way you can beat your score is by time. Tree feller wants to try to. Oh, oh that's. Yeah. I will tell you guys. I don't know if I can duplicate that shooting that. Um, and I did shoot it quickly, but I, I had. I think I had forty seconds. Yeah, left. with the bipod. But forget the time. That is a tough challenge. Uh, who drove the uh, Ray? Drove the uh, Gurkha back. Yeah, I did. I'm usually the only one ever driving that thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it sucks. It does suck. I drove back from one shows. That's right. When we when we came back from the gathering, I was like, "Rick, you need to drive that thing." Yeah, it's not the funnest thing to drive. Love watching suits outtakes. Let's see, my favorite knife is Rick's new SoCom Elite. Man. I love that knife. He can thank me for that. Yeah, Ray hooked me up on that deal. I knew where one was, and I said, "All right, well, if he wants it, we can make it happen." I actually have one, but it's a manual. And I've been offered insane money for that thing. And I mean, it's been well used as well. But this one was in pretty good shape um, that Rick got. And it's the yeah. auto. And it's got the locking back on it. I think it's from 04. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Yeah, it's an older knife. That's one of the things I really like is they put the birth date of those things on it. Dang, she ball sick. You got your Stitch DLC. Asshole. <laughs> uh, there were very few of those there, by the way. They didn't take that many. No, they were gone. It was like, what the, where did they go? I didn't even see it in the case yet. Got to move quick. I would have bought one. Yeah, great job, uh, Shibal Seki. I need another SOCOM Elite manual, but want partial serrated blade this time. Uh, there's one on the site if somebody hasn't picked it up already. <laughs> yeah, Bob and Curious better yep. get over there. Those were yep. going... Like nobody's business, the manuals. Yeah. And you guys were the first persons, the first people to hear about this. Cause like I said, I was like, you know what? I need to start stocking some of these and I can't leave it up there long. I'm only going to leave it up there a couple of days or so. If they don't sell on that site, then I've, I've got other ways of, of getting rid of those. But I wanted you guys to have the first chance at it. Um, what is that? Uh, you got Chris, any marks? From, Chris, oh, is are those the marks from getting tased? The whole thing is my arm was fine until I got it. All this is a bruise. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> sure it was. What site? Microtech? No. No. X-Ring Customs. Go to X-Ring Customs. You better buy it for somebody else. And you've got to go to shop. And I think it's on the first four pages. Those knobs are on there. Shoal. Shoal. 
I just put the stone watch stitch in my cart. I'm sure he would kill me for 800 bucks tonight. Uh, guys, the stitches have been unavailable. They really have been. Um, I put the link up. Knuckle nuts. Uh, you got, I got to reach over the microphone. Oh, poor little Ray. Otherwise, I'd have to speak like this. <clears throat> Let's see. I don't know what it is. X Ring Customs? Yeah, X Ring Customs.com. I think you got a WW yeah. so that it actually works as a link. Oh, you're such a nice guy. Uh, and I actually have had the, uh, the multi multicam bad MF in stock as well. So it is a, a beefy knife. There. It is a beefy. Oh, Joaquin's got one of those actually. Tree Feller got 85 and 53 seconds on the hostage challenge. Nice. That's smoking it. I mean, it's the only. Drug. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Shaggy Rockman. Look at that. Look at that. Thanks. Yeah. That's that's why he's a mechanic. He's got the wrench. That's right. You have to put. Thanks, Shaggy Rockman. When I got great guys like you out there, you guys are on top of it. So, how many miles did you run today? Three. Three point three. I ran a little more. Well, okay, so we've been at a hotel for the last four days. We've been eating freaking steak and crab legs and bad. Lots of stuff I shouldn't be eating. So I figured I had to do two two days worth of work today. So then I, I grabbed the pack and went up that hill, that driveway, and I just kept going up and down, you know, on the left over here. Yeah. So I got I got at it. And then I did some uh, weights. Talking Rock says, buy the bad MF, great bag. I appreciate that. We actually took some to the show. Um, Tony actually allowed us to put some of those in there to kind of show the heritage of where um, the knife pouch bag came from, where it originated. And we actually sold a few while we were there. And um, do you two go to Copeland's? Do you two go to Copeland's? I don't know what that is. Did you two go to Copeland's? Copeland's is a store uh, for shopping, but no, I didn't, I didn't go to Copeland's. No, no. Snake Man had it, but it's gone before you could pay for it. <laughs> Almost all the miles <laughs> are gone. That's crazy. Uh, I really appreciate it, guys. I'll try to get all of them shipped out uh, tomorrow or Wednesday at the latest. And um, can't wait for the belts. We, we just have so much, much stuff in the works right now as far as the bags and the belts. The rifle bag, guys, is done. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to go to market with it, though, because the price point, unless I go overseas, I don't know if it can sustain the market. I mean, the price point that they came back for raw materials and finished oh, is no. actually what I wanted to sell it for. And it is over $200, my cost. And so I, I just don't, there's a place for it in the market, but I just don't see it happening. Um, that might be a scrapped project. Um, I really don't want to source anything from overseas. You guys know that I'm huge about made in the USA, um, but they're basically saying that they just can't do it. There's just too much quality built into it as far as the padding. I mean, there's padding everywhere on it and the way that it's designed. So I, I don't know if that will ever come to fruition. Commonwealth's trying to get in shape for basic. Dang, trying to get it to 17. 17 minutes. Oh, nice. Oh. Zip ties are running out for me. For some reason, I was thinking he was a... Oh, Copeland's Restaurant. No, yeah. no. I, yeah, no, I did not go there. But no, Copeland's used to be a... Uh, I think it still is. It was a, a department store. We went into Atlanta. Might have been spelled differently. Right? Yeah, we went into downtown Atlanta. He just he place called steak. The Cuts Steakhouse. Yeah. And there was nothing to write home about. Nope. At all. I was a little disappointed with that one. Yeah. <laughs> what are you like? No, I'm just laughing thinking about that place. It says, Ray, I will buy one. I still got the LEDT in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate that, Dick. But the problem is, is, you know, I've got to be able to do X amount of quantity to even get that price. They won't do onesies and twosies. Um, like I said, we do have the finished product. Maybe I can show you guys one night on the channel, but I just, I don't know if it's going to work. Are we yeah, talking about I the just, gun bag? Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately. I, I'm realistic about what I Take would Take care, for Jason. Tree we'll see you, Jason. 
People pay $300 for snap-on ratchets. I'm sure your bad MF will do just fine on the market. Oh, no. The bad MF is great. We're talking about a different bag, Shaggy Rifleman. Now, what I did was I designed, and some of you guys have already seen this. For those that have already seen it, I apologize. But just to get everybody up to speed, one of the biggest problems that I've seen in all these years of competitive shooting is, number one, if you're a three-gunner, there's very few rifle bags that will accommodate a, a three gun shotgun with extension tubes to hold 13 plus one. Um, it'll measure out to 54 to 55 inches in overall length. Yeah, and so, so what most people are relegated to is to either buy the Voodoo. Voodoo makes a three gun bag. And it's too expensive. I will and it's very expensive. It's around $300 or so. It's a great, great bag. Um, but then there's others that don't want to spend that kind of money. What they do is they end up getting one of those sliding scabbards, uh, which is, you know, basically made for a field shotgun. Then comes PRS rifles. You're talking about a rifle that's 56 inches long. You've got a pretty tall scope on it, uh, typically anyway. And there's very few bags that those will fit into really well and hold multiple items. So... Uh, Bad Billy says that Lynx defense bags are 369 to 399. I, I know. And so the Armageddon gears are like 300 and some change. Yeah. So for those that have seen this, then like I said, I apologize once again, but um, I, geez, I can't see. You're fine. It's zoomed in. I just, can't. Just put it right in the front where the camera's at. Okay. There you go. How can we tell if it's zoomed in? Because <laughs> you, <laughs> you're freaking killing me, dude. Go here. All right, let me just because your camera is all jacked up, it's not jacked flipping up, flipping up and upside down. All right, so anyway. well, the ring is in the way. All right, so the there it is, fire. right there. And if you'll see that laser cut, what will happen there is the bad MF will actually attach to that side. You actually have lined pockets on both sides, and then on the flip side of this, you actually have three pockets, but two of them are bridged. And the reason I did that is you can collapse down like a really right stuff tripod and it will fit perfectly in that double pocket. You still have another pocket as well. It also has the Velcro internal. So the AICS mags holders, the rimfire holders, all of that stuff that's integrated for the bad MF will fit inside of that. There is nothing on this that doesn't have a half inch of padding everywhere. It's the ends. It's the top. It'll hold a full length. I mean, a, the full height. You can even throw a mag in it. Um, for your PRS style rifle and it's 56 inches long. So it'll accommodate pretty much anything. I was able to get my PRS rifle with a suppressor on it without any issues. Nice. Yeah. So that was the whole intention and it does have the, um, the QD slings as well, the sling points. Um, so you can just put your sling on there. Actually, you can put two your on PRS there and, rifle. and carry it horizontally. For yeah. Sure. The one that Kenny built for me. That one goes in there with the uh, R6 suppressor without any issues. And, uh, yeah, so that's what I was hoping to do. We'll see. I just, I don't know. Continue with the bag, they said. The fitted case for the Magnum Ruger RPR is $500. Yeesh. The Army getting the gear bags are $450 plus. Jeez. That's why she's got a QVC. <laughs> Michael Kors making payments on $300. Yeah, I'll look at it. It's just the thing is, it's a big investment for us. Um, if if I end up going that route, um, yeah, it's like I said, I'm not making a, a fortune off any of this stuff. Just trying to bring innovative products out there. Um, the the data card holder that I was coming up with, uh, I don't know. I think we might have gotten a little taken on that because I still don't have a working prototype. Um, they ended up taking on a lot of work and they didn't have time for that project. So they're going to have to reimburse our money or we'll see. I would build a hundred feet of those. I'll guarantee it. So I would say a hundred of them. Besides everybody steals those. Let's see. Just put it on credit. You know that? What is the minimum for your initial order? You may be able to get commitments. I'd certainly be interested. There's Chris Beck. Got to got to hang out with Chris Beck for just a split second. Seemed like he actually lives works just down the street, so that was kind of neat. To yeah, HRM in. weapons machinist. He said he was a snap on type dude once. I had to cave into pressure. Um, would have went to jail. Swing a BMF at Pesky for uh, Pesky. You know, effort. Uh, they didn't honor warranty. Good. 
just a rebuild job on the ratchets. So I've been there. I actually bought some of their electronic torque wrenches, um, the longer ones, and I had one for a total of about a week. And I was well within the torque range and the neck snapped. And I wasn't loosening a bolt or anything like that. I was just actually trying to torque it. And I contacted them. I was like, this thing's like a week old. I said, it, it broke um, at the neck. And they said, what were you trying to do? Take off? Well, I said, no, I wasn't taking off anything. I was actually torquing a bolt. And I ran into the same issue. And it had, had it not been for someone that I knew that was really tied in with Snap-on, I would have never gotten that replaced. And that was an expensive wrench. So I feel your pain. I've also stripped out a ratchet um, as well. Um, my favorite ratchet, as a matter of fact. And they didn't want to warranty that. Wow. So, yeah, it's crazy. That's crap. They're supposed to. Used to be Snap good. on used to be good, yeah. Yeah, they're so expensive. I would buy a rifle bag. I need a bag for my 30 inch. Yeah, okay. Well, let me look and see. Like I said, uh, you know, just hearing you know from you guys, maybe there is, you know, a, a big need for it. I know there's one because I'd like to have one, but you know, I just can't do a one-off. Minimum order is gonna be 50 pieces. And so, you know, that would be my thing is is getting that out there. But oh, and I did use the YKK zippers. Actually, it's the same zippers. Um, that they use on a lot of the higher end bags where it's coated. And here is kind of a better view of the points for the sling attach points. And then the, the handle is super, super comfortable, especially when you've got a lot of weight in there. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Oh, big country says he needs to. I hear you. Kmart used to have a lifetime guarantee tool line. Snap on used to be good. Yeah, that was like cobalt. And the problem is, is Kmart you know, was Craftsman, wasn't it? No, Sears always carried the Craftsman brand. But no, but then Kmart and Sears I don't bought know. out. I thought that something. was Stanley or something like that. That'd be yellow. But then, you know, you had cobalt. And then Cobalt was by Lowe's, but then they bought out Craftsman. You don't really see any more Cobalt stuff. And if you break something on the Cobalt, which I did recently, they were like, switch it out for that Craftsman. So, I don't know. They're only good as they're going to be around. Yeah. Dick Head just says he's already counted 28 orders on here. <laughs> yeah. If somebody wanted me to have a complete master collection, I would take, I would take it. That's right. I have a box of Matco and Snap-on broken, even my uncle being a Snap-on dealer. Dang. Be very careful my tool still broken stuff. Yeah, Drew. Uh, I like the Matco stuff as well. Yeah. Yeah, they're right there with Snap on. Or at least used to be. Yeah. Better better than it's, you know, I don't know the whole relationship. I've got a lot of wrenches from Blackhawk, which is a Snap on branded deal. Um, those are those are nice actually, but the, those strip out pretty easily if you use too much torque. I'm gonna good. Snap some line wrenches. I have broken tools of all brands. Same here. What's up, Orion Fixer? Welcome to the show, buddy. I'll double your, yeah, your pant, pant order if you do it. Snake Man says he'll take one. Like, like I said, I'm just trying to get some feedback from you guys. We have so many things going right now, but um, it's nuts. Yeah, it, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah, I think I think we can talk right now. Yeah. So these belts. Are we, I am going to be buying the, the buckles from Microtech. I can show you this up close now. Now, all the scratches and everything you see on this, this is actually Cerakoted because these are the first prototypes. Uh, the new ones now are missing a screw right here. We've removed this screw. Uh, this buckle right here has actually been load tested and will break right at 5,000 pounds. Not that you need that, but it is stronger than the Austria Alpen buckles that we tested has a double latch mechanism and we've been wearing these nonstop for about five or six months. They will not be Cerakoted. They will actually be type three mil spec hard coat. Um, and this is a patent design <laughs> that we actually Rick and I and Sam make every one of these buckles. We actually have a fixture that we put it in. And so these are starting to hit the market. We're also going to have these in titanium. Uh, but of course that price will go up, but. That's it. So you guys can see it up close now with all the hard use. It's actually pretty good. Cool. Actually, it's, it's I don't, a good buckle. I don't mind building those at all. Somebody said way to change the topic. Yeah, was Dick. Hey, yeah. That's, that's what you were doing. What up, Johnny Wad? That's why I retired. 
All right. Talking Rock says he's never had a problem with snap-on warranty. When I worked at the muffler shop when I was in high school, I'd spend a good majority of my checks on just things I needed for tightening mufflers. And the yeah, ratchet, though, the ratchet, the snap-on ratchet. Yeah. I don't know about now. This is like 20-something years ago. I love that damn thing. That was the nicest ratchet ever. See, you didn't grow up around NASCAR like I did. You know, I, mean, I was literally a mile away from yeah. Lowe's or, quote, unquote, back in the day, Charlotte Motor Speedway. And it was crazy to see these new mechanics coming out. You know, they're they're fresh out. And they get on with a team, you know, let's say like Hendricks or something like that. Like within the first couple of weeks, they're getting a $10,000 toolbox. Yeah. And the Snap-on guy's loving it because, of course, yeah. you know, you just make little payments every week. You know, oh, yeah. just take a little bit every oh, week. Yeah. Next thing you know, I mean, this guy's got $60,000 in tools and he hasn't used a tenth of them. tenth of them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they so, show up every week. Every week in their tool truck. Yep. Yeah. And uh, making a fortune. They say, what do you need now? Are those belts adjustable? There's a okay, so I'll show you this now. now. Now that the word is out on these, and these are actually starting to be marketed because Microtech will actually have these as well. It's gonna be like four times the cost. So, what I designed on this was it is a tactical belt, right? Like what you guys always see. When I say tactical belt, the problem that I've seen with all of the belts that are made of webbing is they're too rigid, and after a while, that edge will cut into you. We've talked about this before. Um, and I know you guys might say, well, wait a minute, this is not supposed to be a fix that should have a slider. Uh, we have every configuration. We have slider, slider, fixed, fixed, slider, fixed, and fixed slider. So what you can do is you can actually adjust both sides of this. So it's adjustable in size to about a three inch range or so. So it, it's a fitted belt, but the back of it, which you guys know the whole secret back here, and this was the very first prototype. The new ones are now finished looking. The edges are finished. Sam's got one. You don't have one. Do I don't you? have the new one. He doesn't have the new new one. I have one. the prototype. But the thing is, is when you're carrying in the waist at that, you know, appendix, or if you're carrying at six o'clock, or even if you're not carrying, it is the most comfortable belt you'll wear because when you bend over or you tie your shoes, you don't feel all this pressure. It still has a lot of tension. Actually, if I you can pull see this, it. Actually, you, can you see guys it. will see that stretch. You see that? So, so it's giving. You will not get any stretch out of regular webbing. Okay, one and three quarter inch webbing. And so it'll have a label sewn on it. Like I said, these were the first prototypes, but it does stretch just enough to let you breathe a little bit and not cut into you. It has been by far the most comfortable belt I've ever worn. And awesome, buddy, D, man. The Congrats. other thing is, is I've designed it this way so that you don't have to weave this portion through your belt loop like most of your uh, Austro Alpen buckles that are pain in the butt. When I take this <laughs> off, it is instant. Boom. And you pull it out of your belt loops, threading it through. You thread this side through, comes back through. And then once you get up to the front, then you just go through here and you tension. Post buffet, guys, is this. We're post buffet. <laughs> we've already had all the we've already had these discussions. Yeah. So depending on how big your post buffet. Oh. Yeah, see, now you're doing it. <laughs> Shut up, dick. All right. You just go and you go to the first notch. Yeah. Well, oh, damn it. But it can close on you. There we go. That's that's post buffet. <laughs> or you um, could just. We're actually going through the process now of trying to get this load rated. Um, we actually had it done on certified equipment. We went to a, a facility and they, they tested it, and we wanted to see if we could get to. We got good questions out here. Five thousand pounds. We got a uh, she ball oh, wants to know if it's inch and three quarter or inch and a half, or will they? You have an inch and a half. Uh, right now, just one and three quarter inch. That's it. Um, uh, guys, we've been running these belts, like I said, five to six months, and I've done a lot of range time with it, uh, carrying in the waistband and everything else, but it'll clip on to it. So as long as you have a decent clip, uh, I haven't had any They're issues. They're not as rigid as some of those belts that, you know, they claim they're just like crazy stiff. Yeah. I don't want to wear one. Of those I don't want there. one that I can stand on. It's got it. Ha ha ha! Sold. What is it? How is it when you pull your pistols? Original? Yes. Show yeah, you sure. I am six foot, one hundred twenty pounds. What is the post puff? Yeah, no shit. You need to go eat some more damn food. Is what you need. So I'm going to be doing sizes from thirty inches all the way up to forty eight, I believe. 
and you've got three inches of range on that adjustment. So there's one belt that fits 30 to 33, and you still have plenty of adjustment. And then you've got 33 to 36, blah, blah, so on. What would so you forth. say your biggest one's going to be? 48. Do I need to go any bigger than yeah, 48? Yeah, I was going to say, we should ask. Like, is there a few of you? Because they can order a few that are, you know, I don't want to say a little bit bigger, but you know what I mean? If there's a, if someone's interested, I'm sure we can pull off getting a few made. HRM. Yeah, I've got a ton of SK stuff. Old school. Came in a green uh, uh, tin, and well, at least most of mine did. And yeah, I still have that stuff. The SK tools are actually pretty good. So, Tim Davis, what size would you need, buddy? Do you have a cost on the belt yet? No. Okay, so Joe M., when I sell this belt, depending on the buckle, what I'm, what I'm thinking about doing, and Rick came up with a really good idea today. I was if I put really a if I if I put the one inch Cobra buckle on here, you're looking at something around seventy dollars, which is still on the lower end of something with a with a Cobra. If it has this buckle on there, it's going to have to be a little bit more because we haven't solidified the price with Microtech yet on what we would be charged on them. No, I will tell you. This exact belt, and I cannot make this up, guys. This exact belt of Late Show, uh, they took two of them there, and they both sold for two hundred and fifty bucks. I would never do that to anybody, uh, but I also don't have a dagger. Can on I there. tell them what the titanium one cost? Yeah, go ahead and tell them. So they made titanium buckle. <laughs> yeah, with the with dagger, a leather belt, and uh, the guy goes, "We they made ten of them. They made ten. I know it sold all I ten. Sold three of them. Check this out." Ah. Uh, <laughs> So I'm sitting there doing my sales thing, you know, and there's a certain individual comes up and he's like, yeah, I need to make an order. And I have my little pad. And he's like, ah, you're probably going to want a bigger pad. So I'm like, ah, oh, no, not another one of these. Yeah, another one of those. So he's, he was from somewhere in Asia. They're huge. Micro, Microtech is huge across the, across the way. They love, they love the Microtech knives. And um, so he's like, I want, I want one of these, one of those, three of these, you know, and so on. And at the time, I didn't even know the price on them. So I had to wait. I actually had to wait for those to show up. So just the buckle in titanium with uh, that card like is on that one custom thing. It's got, a, you know, the certificate of authenticity. Yep. See away. Just that part right there. There in titanium. in titanium with the dagger logo and uh you know actually not seracoded six hundred and seventy five dollars. Now what did it cost for the whole belt? Uh, I don't know, right? Third they sold those belts for fifteen hundred dollars with Italian leather. Uh, there's a company uh, that made the belts for them. It uses Chicago screws. There's a lot of other hardware on there. Red. I don't own one. Not going to own one of those, but that's insane. That's getting into like Louis Vuitton range. There, there was so much stuff going on. It was crazy. A lot of people, uh, a lot of people paid cash. You could tell there was big dealers and all that kind of stuff. It was fun. What's two plus two? Red. It's four here. Tree fella, you missed Ray's great belt <laughs> and switch. Well, the thing oh, is, yeah. I've been wearing this belt. I kind of gave you guys a preview of it when, <coughs> I, first, when I first invented it. Hell but, was, um, I was just trying to keep it quiet because six this buckle. Ago. We were trying to get the patents done on this buckle here. And so we couldn't show it. And now that it's public and we have the patents, we're good to go on that. Guys, so. it's an amazing buckle. It's really cool. You would know because you built them. Yeah, they're cool. Yeah, I like it. I like it. One of the reasons we got rid of the screw here is it was a weak point. And we were strength testing these. And I actually had the video of the slow-mo. The, the first sacrificial point was here. So uh, we sat down and I said, we need to get rid of that screw. They strengthened up the corners a little bit. And yeah, 50 or 40, it was 4,900 pounds. Then those should be worth two. And that billion. will hold over 2,000 in the first position. Yeah. So if you have post buffet and you got a you know belly pressure of more than 2,000, you're going to want to click her in to get the full four or five. <laughs> yeah, Macab, it has nothing to do with the Velcro attachment and the buckle. This buckle is going to have a different purpose in life 
than on a, uh, a web belt, just like this buckle will never see its use on my, What's uh, up, Mac F? you'll never be able to explore the limits on the bad MF. I mean, honestly, I could have used a plastic buckle. Uh, I could, I looked at all of the plastic ones that were out there. It's for, um, other, it's other, for other things and other applications. It has nothing to do with my product. But because I was part of it, um, we're going to go ahead and have it and get it. Nobody. And it's badass. Why do you need a freaking Cobra buckle that holds 2,000 plus pounds on a tactical belt? You don't. There's no reason. And guys, I don't know if you know this, but regardless of Unless the strength of the weapon, on it. almost anything that goes through a buckle like this will explode at about 2,000 pounds. Um, that's about what that it is. No, 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 no. What'd you this, say? This, this is the thing. Like with the sliders and all this other stuff, guys. Whenever you use like one inch webbing in it, regardless of how strong the buckle is, it the webbing will It'll usually shear, shear here yeah. because of the angle. Uh, so when you get into testing it's and testing a pinch fabrics, point instead of a round point, correct, we'll actually use like four or five pieces of webbing that we could try to put in here and reinforce, or we'll use Kevlar um, just to get the strength out of the buckle. But Mac, have great point. You're never going to see that here. This back will blow out first. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, things that are gonna probably take effect with those things. Yeah, on Tony's end, on the uh, Microtech side, I mean, like, yeah, there's room for inlays and all sorts of cool, crazy stuff. So <laughs> he said, "What's up, Stratos?" I had to use my work truck seatbelt as a sling to get me unstuck in the sand pit. Yep. <laughs> we'll see, HRM. Have a good one. Uh, we're only gonna do tan in the beginning. Or the FDE Coyote slash color. That's Ray's um, favorite color. I'm not planning on doing multicam. I'm not a big fan of black either. Um, the knife bags look sweet. They do, but they show dirt. That was one of the big things. That's why we didn't do black yeah. in the bad MF. Yeah, and the gun field, it's not the greatest. With thing. mud, especially here in the south. Well, when you're at the show and you want to show off your cool knives, it's okay. That, that's not my bag. It's somebody else's bag when it comes to that. You know? What's up, Cloud Kicker? Looks really cool. Yeah, the uh, those buckles are really neat, especially the new ones that got the logos all done on them. Well, I appreciate that. Yeah, I think they do look good. And I pushed for them to put the logos on there, so we, uh, we made it a point to make it happen. All right, so let's talk about shooting stuff. What's going on with regards to shooting over the next couple of weeks? What's going on? I need to freaking load ammo. So if Rick can't get ammo loaded up by next Tuesday, next Tuesday is when I hit the road to head out west. We'll be shooting 22 Then right he's going to have to fly his ammo out with him because it's got to make it in the back of my truck. So I think he's got time for that, but we're gearing up. I won't be able to make the next couple of matches that these guys are going to. You are yeah. shooting a match. I'll shoot, shoot on Chris's 19th, match on the 19th. Which then. is a uh, rimfire. Yeah, and then head out to Wyoming on the 22nd. Okay, I'm leaving for Wyoming on the 15th, and I will be on the road. And um, my plan is get over there as quick as I can, and then Durango, Silverton, Moab, and then I'm going to fly fish in Casper, and then come in probably that e Wednesday evening for the Burris Optics Team Challenge. Seafoam green buckles. Yeah, won't see that. Shaggy Rothman wants me to to uh, rattle can them up some sea foam buckles. Yeah, somebody would definitely get it. I'm a fan of the black multi cam or the aquaflage. Actually, some of that stuff looks really cool. Nice cloud kicker. Rick, what's the lead son? time for titanium now? Oh, big country's gonna be out at the VOD, brother. Oh dang, I hate hey. I'm not gonna be there. Nice, big country. His son's going to kick all our asses, too. I don't need you to show up to that match. I need the points. It says, I need to go to the Cody Firearms Museum. I feel like I, I can't shoot anymore. I haven't done. We'll see you, Ace, in the hole. Have good a good one, Ace. Nice seeing you at the, at the show. Let's see. Rick better have less chats and start riding that Dylan. I know. And, I've you know, I've been we've been really busy the last week, so. I I missed out on a few chats. Are you gonna use that as a? Are you gonna carry that thing around, or are you gonna more of a collection? I am of, not a collector. Uh, I'm a user, an abuser, fly user fishing, an abuser. Yes, Mac MTB. Well, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, oh, up that way. 
Dewport. Casper, Wyoming has always been uh, known as the holy grail for fly fishing. It's one of the premier destinations. You know what else? It's uh, also suicide. Casper, Wyoming. Suicide. It used to be the high, highest rate of suicides in the, the country back in the day. Uh, I, how would you know that? Very obscure there. I don't know. I came across it on something. Send your stuff over along with that fancy scale, and I'll load in for you. <laughs> you guys coming back to Griffin Group? John's next match. No, we'll be gone. That's the match after. Who was that? Oh, Cloud Kicker. Um, what day is that, Cloud Kicker? When is the partial serrated uh, Scarab 2 coming? Oh, they're out, buddy. I could have, we could have got, oh, oh, they had a full serrated. The frag offs, the frag offs went really well. Sold a ton of those things. Uh, 25th, 26th. No, I'll be in Wyoming. That's the that's the same week as the match, so I, I won't be on that one. Actually, uh, Josh had asked me if I was going to make that one. Depends on the perspective of fashion. I'm trying to get my wife to go to the Bronco off road. Oh, off rodeo in Moab this summer. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Tim Davis has a little wheeler he takes. Really? Mm -hmm. I remember I remember when we were in Florida, he showed me a picture of it. Sorry, trying to answer an email. No, boom, 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 boom. All right, anybody? We've got dad hats. we got flex fits. We've got a few different styles if you still need any. There was someone that who had asked me, oh, Ace in the Hole? It was either Ace in the Hole or Six Creeder. Or someone was asking about hats. I still got some hats available depending on what. We are on your score. Nice, big country. That's going to be awesome. Get to watch your son shoot. Have a good one, Tips 43. You guys stay safe out there. And, uh, Yeah, that's going to be neat, big country. It'll be fun to meet up with you guys. Do a little shooting. Yeah, I hate I'm going to miss that. Diesel truck versus gas. You need bigger truck. Diesel. If you're going to haul stuff. Oh, you got What's that this? big old tractor, Val. You got the big tractor. You need a diesel, man. That would be my... Oh, he likes the Ram, though. Why? Torque. Torque. Torque, torque, torque. I used to pull a 38-foot toy hauler with a whole bunch of weight in it. Up and down the grades. I think gas, if you just got to do it once, twice. I don't know. What's your thoughts on that? I know you have a diesel, so. Uh, I'm a huge diesel guy. If you're going to be pulling stuff a lot, yeah. um, I've had – Quite a few of the gas work trucks um, that were 2500 series and good gracious those things strength to fuel i would not want one uh to drive around all the time i mean even if gas prices are cheap it's expensive so yeah. uh, i'd probably be more inclined to go with the diesel well anytime you're hauling something you're but I, I pull trailers every week uh, multiple times a week and uh, you know dump trailers Every once in a while, that probably shouldn't be pulling what we're pulling. But you don't want ponies. You want torque. You want the torque. Ponies don't mean shit, really. Gas has more ponies and less maintenance. What is he talking about? You know, the <laughs> thing is, is, you know, most diesels, you're going to be good for 200 plus thousand miles. Um, and I don't like all the death fluid and everything else they're putting in them now. But, um, you know, if it's out of warranty, I mean, people do some things called deletes and whatnot. But delete. The hey, 4 Hemi has better gas mileage than diesel. It's not gas mileage. Damn it. Pay attention. Yeah, Rick, 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 Rick can he, tell you, my diesel. He's the, he's the mechanic guy. My diesel actually gets, uh, on average, if I'm driving around town and everything, I'll get about 16 or so. 
But the minute I get on the interstate or anywhere like that, I'm going to be averaging 20 to about 21 miles to the gallon that diesel. Now, that's not with a trailer hooked up. If I hook a trailer up to it, I'm going to drop down to about 13 always. It doesn't matter if it's a light trailer or a heavy trailer. Uh, but the good thing is you don't even know what's back there, you know, yeah. at all. Yeah, because I remember pulling that trailer, you know, 75 upgrades and just, you know. Yeah. All new diesels have all the diff crap. I don't want to deal with it. Then why are you asking us, Bell? Get yourself a gas. Get, and get you a gas. That's blow it. Yeah. it up, blow it up in 90,000 miles. Whatever. Yeah. It's all good. How old is your truck? My truck is 2018 is when I got it. Uh, it was brand new. In, it hey, was Mario. 2017. I got it new in 18. I've got 100,000 miles on it now. Um so yeah, I mean that's it. I've had no issues with that one. Now the previous one to that was the first generation of that um, of that engine, and it had a lot less torque in it, and that one gave oh, me problems. That was but, an issue. One. Yeah, I had um, the engine wasn't a problem at all. It was I just had some electrical gremlins in that, and they ended up buying that one back, and so that's how I got it replaced with that this this one I'm driving now. But no issues. And I think it has. Is it like 700 and something pound feet of torque or 900 now? Something crazy. I don't know what it is. Love it. No. Well, you know, the valve, I don't know how much he'd be hauling that thing around, but he's got that little mini excavator. Yeah. I don't know what those weigh, but I know they're not white. Oh, another reason, too, is when you, when you do upgrade to a diesel... And you go to a bigger, you know, like from a 250 to <laughs> somebody call over to karate. Why child. do I never see that in time? <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, you better turn those in. What? Those scratchers. I got to mail them. We can't turn them in. You got to mail them. 7.3, you mean, though? So yeah, 7.3 because the 6.0 is a horrible engine. I have that crappy ass motor. And it blew up at 34,000 miles. I had to get it rebuilt. That was on the way to North Carolina. The mini excavator is 10,000 pounds. Can't even find used diesels now. No, you can't. What's your guys saw some pistol braces? They want to put these under NFA items and make you pay $200 and register them. I think that's a load of crap. Um, Man, I tell you what, California rocked it this month. Yeah, but we'll see where that goes. But they did. That was that, huge. That, that, that said, judge. Nope. That judge said. Smack yourself. Give me that damn thing. I wish small truckers, uh, truck makers would make trucks like big truck engines. Yep. <laughs> Shack your rifleman. Throw your brace away. Put a stop. Zap them right No, I'm not going to do that. What is up, Criderman? Oh, now Criderman. He says, up. I was Blade Show. He missed the whole chat. It's always Criderman. Just, he's sleeping. What happened, Kreiderman? Right, at least he got on. He's hey, Kreiderman, are you shooting on the 19th at VOD? I would assume so. Anyways, Big Country and his son will be on that uh, squad, so it'll be really cool. Big Country. Alphabet Gang has lost their mind. Yes, they That'll have. be nice, actually, because then uh, Big Country can help spot, too. We'll have another, more spotters, so it'll give us time to get our plan of attack and load our mags. I hope they give us the uh, all free shot free register shot. pistols as SBR. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. We'll see how that whole magic trick works out. It's got to be a huge thing. That is a huge, huge plus moving forward. Facebook Marketplace. I'll sell my house and get this. <laughs> All right, how long have we been yapping for? It's been it's uh ten thirty. No, we still got. It's been a long week. We got. I know. We got fifty one thumbs up, sixty nine watching. Appreciate everybody showing up. And uh, oh, oh, this is a good question. Hanging out with the madness. My vortex scope question: Does the vortex Gen two razor one to ten lack a parallax adjustment? Yes, it does. That was one of my complaints about it. I owned that scope when it first came out. And I love the reticle, love the scope, but I wish it had parallax adjustments. The same thing for some of these one to eights that are coming out or that have been out. Um, it's like you can't be on one and then be on 10 and it'd be perfect. It was just, it's crazy. 
How would you adjust this from shooting long to short distances? That's the thing, Outlaw Josie Wells, you don't. The only thing you could do is adjust the ocular uh, just slightly, and that does make a difference. But if you're looking for a true one power and you get that adjusted just right, when you go to 10 or if you get to – and, guys, it's really tough to do it. This is why a lot of manufacturers haven't just thrown them out there. But one to fours work great. One to sixes work great. When you get into that one to eight, it's very tough to do that within the scope. And then one to 10 makes it even more difficult. Uh, I've spoken at length with scope manufacturers about this, and it is a challenge. Um, but it is one of my biggest complaints about these LVPOs that are one to eight and one to tens. You can get it set either one end or the other, but it's never going to be perfect. And I like, yeah, I like to be crystal clear focused if I'm, you know, if I'm shooting, but you don't always. Some of these matches set up so you can't. <laughs> of course, they're going to. Be a pain in the butt. Parallax is kind of a focus, yeah. Kenny is twisting an ankle. Hey, no. shut out. I'm glad you're shut on Shut out. Did you shoot the um, Steel Safari? Um, I know you commented like it. it, so we thought you did. Yeah, we're go I'm going with yeah, but I don't know if you did or not. That thing better be programmed with a kit for Night, night Rider. Rider. Where would you like to go? Oh, he did. Yes. How did you do? I saw, um, I read that they moved a lot of the targets and. I thought he texted that to us or something. He didn't text it to me. Shut up. Never contacted What was me. it, a comment? How did we figure that out? Y'all missed a good one. Somebody commented. Yeah, no, we wanted to make it out there. We you go, but there was it. no way. Not for Blade We're Show. probably going to end up missing the next one because it'll be the same damn time anyways. Biggest. Yeah, it's always the yeah, same week. Yeah, y'all Never missed, changes. Um, How'd you do? Did he say? No. Not yet. No, no Kenny, I saw Colin came in fifth. So if he came in fifth, I know it was pretty tough, but. Never mind. I forgot Dodge has smoke and crack this year. I got fourth out of 10 gas gunners. Hit 107 out of 154. That's good. That's good. So you got a great partner. You're going to make it tough. I just got to make it to the. Kenny and I. To the stage. You'll make it to the stage. <laughs> Shut up. We're looking forward to it, uh, Hugo. It's going to be a fun time. I ran I ran today, shout out, a couple times, actually, because I, uh, I was eating badly this last few four days. I didn't exercise at all, so I, I turned it up a notch today. Ninja, Ninja power. power is in the rice. <laughs> yeah, you guys are going to do well. You're going to do well. I Kenny's, think you guys will do well. Kenny's got – he's got a uh, – He's got a little bit of finding targets to work on. I'm gonna, gonna assume he's that, shooting matches this weekend. Yeah, that, that'll be his. You know, a tough part. But you were gonna say downfall? Is that what you're gonna say? That's his downfall. The rice grains of awesomeness. That's correct. <laughs> Longest target was a three target array at fourteen fifty. Yeesh. Put a Hellcat motor in a van. Shout out. Did you get hotel rooms and all that figured out? Did you figure out how far away you guys are camping? What are you guys going to do for a vehicle? I guess we're going to have to figure that out. I mean, I can pick you up, but you're not going to want to wait all day long. I'll be stuck there. I think we're 12 miles away from the range. Oh, you can just walk that back. Oh, heck no. <laughs> no, you should walk that back. Hmm. You and Kenny both with your stuff. That way you'll be ready for the next day. Not happening. Come on, Ray. Come on. I wish I could run in. I wish I could run. Spent five minutes just looking for him. I bet. Yeah, John Rollins. I I was going to mention that. Use the one wheel, but it only has a range of like eight miles. Let me... Lead me surviving low. man walk. Yeah, that's exactly right. But I wouldn't be able to do anything the next what day. What the hell is he saying? Led, led me load that six. Oh no, Shit. more for you. Yeah, right? no, I was. That's why I was like, what the hell? There was a lot of zeros on that stage. <laughs> Everyone spent the whole five did minutes. You put that broomstick in the turret. No, we didn't. Oh, we gotta. I'm gonna give you that holster so you have it for Kenny. So yes. I don't, I don't have yeah. to deal with it. Yeah. 
I'm going to blame it all on your ass when you forget it. Well, I've still got to get the ammo from you and everything else. I know. Well, you better remind me. I don't want to be the guy that forgot his damn holster. Oh, on the way out to um, to this event next week when I start heading out, I'm actually going to swing by in Kansas City and swing by uh, Nighthawk, Nighthawk Customs. I'm going to talk to them about some stuff. Got to check out their new 2011s or their 2011s that they have. and They have a really unique system for mounting an RMR that uses a dovetail. You literally, you pull a pin, it slides off, and you can put the RMR, which has the iron sight in front of it. For a perfect co-witness, Kenny. So that's you, buddy. I'm gonna swing by, talk to those guys, and uh, see if I can't get something going with them. And yeah, we'll see. See what happens. Oh, I'm down to one infinity, huh? I'm down to one infinity. All right, let's see. His wind holds at 2,300 feet per second. Six degrees more. <laughs> we need a microtech facility in Utah. It says Rick S. Elster is there. See, I need Elster to help me come over and help reload some ammo. Are you familiar with the SIG 2400 kilo with ABS? I am not. That's the single one. I'll bring high drops. Don't leave a drink unattended. Oh, geez. Oh, snap. Who said that? Unattended. Uh, Eagle Eye. Oh, you, you put want some eye drops in yeah. your sweet tea? Yeah, that's why I brought bullets. You will be not anal retentive. But you know what? Anal expulsive. You know what? You ain't getting this in. <laughs> I'm gonna put some chili powder in your choney drawers. <laughs> oh, we got to tell them about the cartel. So that was a good one. We are. Uh, we had to stop to get fuel. Yeah, in Atlanta. Yeah, and while we're in there, we always try to keep one inside of that uh, that vehicle if we can. Yeah, someone's waiting in the Gurkha, and so I'm in the driver's seat because you can't see in it because the glass is so thick and everything else. And this, like, oh, yeah. this F350 jacked up, like way up in the air, got all these rims on. I mean, the thing is, I mean, the guy probably had a hundred something thousand dollars in it. Guy gets out. He's Hispanic. He's got like every chain that you're not supposed to have unless you're a cartel, right? And he's got, he's carrying in his waistband a, Mr. T startup a 1911, 45. And this thing is blinged out the way it's not supposed to be unless you're in a cartel. And he comes up, he's like, That's he's, he's not, he's talking to Sam. And Sam brings him around to the door and he goes, You the owner? I was like, uh no you want to sell this i said no i said i don't think the owner will want to sell it oh money is not a problem i said these things are pretty pricey it doesn't matter i just bought a cadillac level five uh armored, bullets, up. armored up up armored i think he said he paid a hundred and she's 180 something thousand dollars for it he's like i want you to take my number because I want to buy this because you never know, man. You never know. You never know, man. And he had all the indicators. I know he's the not doing very good. And everything he, else. No. You I'm the, trying to be a little respectful here, okay? Well, then just say it. I am. Okay, then I'll just say it normally. I'm yeah, there you to, go. Okay, there we yeah, go. So yeah. I'm trying to get him a little bit. Yeah, just a taste. That's like the worst Asian Mexican. Like I said, I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> There's a first. <laughs> <laughs> no. no oh man hey dick catches your fingerprints are still on this thing right <laughs> i love that hispanic accent oh man anyway we did get his number and everything else Carlos and, uh, he's like i'm serious and uh the, his plate his plate actually read chavo oh yeah you're straight up oh dude it was yeah straight up <laughs> yes. right she ball lightning do it right. Time to ride the lightning. You should have sold it to him for double the price. Make sure it's cash. You know what, Val? Um, <laughs> I still have that number because there's a chance I could throw something out there and Tony might actually sell that thing if the price is right. Maybe we can get a new one. Yeah, we put a lot of money in that. So everybody wants me to shop for some reason. You know what? I owe you three. No, you don't owe me crap. Hey guys, no, what do you guys say? Nope, it's part of the game. Nope. You chose. You that gotta card. wait. You gotta wait. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. See, Cloud Kicker says, "Hell yeah, light him up." You should have sold. Okay. So Zap him, Ray. No. Oh, 
I'm Rick. He's Ray. Charles, you making sure they have the names right. <laughs> <laughs> give me something sharp. <laughs> I'll give you a hundred bucks to zap Ray. Now, you know, Matt. Perfect. I'm we'll not, do it. I'm, we'll no, do he it. wants it just to split the money. I'm not going to do that to you, Matt. Split the money. I ain't splitting shit. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> you see how he is? Good. <laughs> yeah, I got it in my hand. You know what? I'm buying two of those things. <laughs> you need... This thing just. Yeah, exactly. Ball curious. Crawl. Actually, remember when we started that game the first time? Yep. I thought it would be really cool because I was going to have Kreidman hook up basically, you know, those hot wire fence things. Yeah. But get, you were going to put it in the seat. I was going to put it in the seat. Burn your house down. And light your ass up. Literally. And wonder Literally. if this will transfer to the metal. Yeah, it will. You want to try it? Yeah, on yours, dude. <laughs> Give me that thing. No, you're not touching it. You can zap all day and split it. <laughs> and, uh, it's a great uh, offer. You need your own taser. Oh man, who's got a taser that's got more than 800,000 volts? Maybe you ought to send that to me so I can shock the living ray out of them. You can get these relatively inexpensively. They had these at Blackstone, this exact same model. When I was doing the I see you demo. two roll around the floor, and, and whoever, whoever gets control gets to fry the other <laughs> cattle prods. Yeah, those will get you. He said it won't transfer through painted surfaces. I've tried. Let me try. I still owe you three. Really. I don't know if I believe that. Well, you're not even. On no, no, I don't know if I believe that. So electricity won't travel through painted surfaces. There's only one way to find out. The volts don't matter. It's the it's current. The, it's the current. The amperage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The transformer makes it a bit heavy, but won't transfer through painted surfaces. I think that's a. <laughs> Yeah, you want to know, don't you? Yeah, I do. You know what? Yeah, yeah, I do. Hit the damn thing. Let's yeah, go. But, okay, but you're not sitting on any metal. I know, because I'm smart. <laughs> well, that won't work. I ain't got rubber shoes on. Just light it up. See what happens. It's not going to do anything, because you're not It's probably going to... You didn't feel anything, did you? Uh -uh. You're not touching the I'm touching the chair. Yeah. How about right here? There's no paint there. No, but I'm on the painted surface. No, right here's no paint though. No, just just touch it right there. Okay, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> we need some more scratch offs. No, we don't. Thank you, man. <laughs> Appreciate it. That's been fun. It will only shock between the points on the end. Rick's chair catches fire. It yeah. will only shock between the points on the end. What does that mean? So that means if I put this on a piece of metal and you're holding it, they're saying it won't because it only shocks between the points on the end. Oh, that's a good test. Let me see the thing. I'm going to try it. Because they're bridging that gap. Just no, it. I'm not giving you this thing because I know how you are. I'm going to get that, and I'm going to get a piece of metal. Get your ass away from me. And I'm going to pull this battery out. Come on, Ray. Get your butt over here. Oh, here we go. All right, so hold the end of this scissor. <laughs> no, I'm not holding Jack. Come on. No, sir. All right, let's take a vote. Who I wants the bathroom right now? And that's the last thing I need. Is okay. You shocked at me pee all over the floor. Go <laughs> pee first, and then we'll do it. <laughs> no, I think I'm good. You know what? I've been shocked one too many times with this thing. Let me see here. I'm going to put it here. <laughs> this is going to suck. It doesn't make sense, though. He's an electrician. You have to trust him. He took the battery out. Kreiderman shocks himself all the time on accident. Oh. I was going to say that one time. Look at those flames in there. All right. We'll save this for another chat. I don't, really, I don't really feel like lighting my butt up right now. Let's see. Current travels through the path of least resistance, just like water. Don't be a sissy, Ray. Yeah, don't be a sissy, Ray. All right. Let's see. The pressure pushing the amps. Amps is the measurement. Guys, documented. Call them all sorts of names. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, these guys are blowing you up. Calling you uh, sissy booties. What are you doing? You got the scissors right there. 
I know. I'm going to hold on to them, and I'm going to hit the zapper while you're touching the scissors. Well, well, you know what? We'll both hold the scissors. I'll hold this side, and you hold this side. I'll hold the handle. <laughs> I already called that part. <laughs> a sissy lala. Mario's calling you a sissy lala. That's okay. I hate <laughs> but shocking's gonna hurt like a son of a. Ow! You know what? I'll, I'm up for it. You want to try this or not? Nope. You go ahead. Put our gasoline on it. Hold picks on drunk. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Here we go. What? You didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it. Rick ain't no sissy. Uh, now I got to do it. Right. You out. Here we go. What happens if I my freaking hand? I will kick you off of it. <laughs> <laughs> I will kick your butt off. Even if you aren't stuck, I'll kick you out. Rick, if he zaps the painted surface and you touch the surface, it won't zap you. If he zaps the raw material. All right, let's get over here and at least test that one out. Come on, get your ass over here, and then we'll end the show. What are we doing? A painted surface. We'll do that one today. All right, so touch something that's painted. All right. Can you? Are you in the thing? Yes. Yeah, so you're going to – okay, now not the bare part. Yeah. Okay, so. What are you doing? Just put Go your ahead. – Go ahead. What? Nothing. All right, now we're try good. This. We're good. On try that. this. Try oh, this. I'm not doing anymore. That's it. Oh my god, it's not gonna go through. Oh, you're sh you're shortening. So now that tells you the answer. Just go ahead and do the scissors. Here. Oh, you go ahead. I tried it. I stuck my arm on it. I don't see how that. Oh, wood. It's not gonna go through wood. <laughs> yeah. Don't yeah. ask. All right, we're out of here. Ain't nobody got time for this. Fill bucket with water. Stick your hand in it. Yeah. Some paints have. Oh, yeah. See? Eagle, I was thinking. Man, I wish we would. All right. Uh, you guys have a great night. Stay safe. And uh, tonight's video was sponsored by Desert Precision Gunworks and Vortex Optics. Get over there. Check out GP Gunworks. Dot com and check out vortexoptics.com. See you guys. Have a great night. Stay safe, and we will see you soon, hopefully. Oh, what did Steve all say? Take care. Excited for the stitch. Yeah. Best part is you're going to love that. <laughs> What'd you do? What'd you do? Karate chop. You know what? I'm throwing this damn thing away. All right. We're out of here.